This is Gail Hausman from the ALS Association Greater Philadelphia Chapter, and I'm here speaking about symptoms of ALS for the ALS 102 series for the healthcare professional. So early symptoms of, of ALS um, might be changes in fine motor coordination of the hands. So like suddenly you're having trouble writing, picking up things, turning your car key, just simple, simple little, little tasks. Um, a person might have some cramping, um, and that could be anywhere. It's usually in the legs. A um, person could notice fasciculations, which are um, involuntary muscle twitching. A uh, person could notice a foot drop where they're, uh, you know, suddenly dragging their foot a little bit. And there's been some, some changes in their gait and perhaps tripping, sometimes falling. Um, for people with early bulbar signs, very often a caregiver will, or a loved one will say that there's been a change in voice quality of the person. Um, they just, their voice just sounds a little different uh, and they might have some slurred speech. Um, for other folks, they might develop orthopnea, which is um, trouble lying flat in bed due to shortness of breath. So they feel like they have to sit up to breathe. Um, these symptoms, however, just as an FYI, may occur with other illnesses. Ongoing symptoms of ALS, progressive muscle weakness. So it starts, it might start in a limb and then that limb will get weaker and then it might go to another limb or, or another area of the body. Fatigue is a very, very common symptom. Um, problems with mobility and completing ADLs, ADLs being activities of daily living, showering, you know, dressing, that kind of thing. A uh, person might have pain which would include or could include spasms, cramps, or pain related to immobility. Just you know, if somebody's laying flat all the time, just having pain from that. Or sometimes they develop some numbness in their lower extremities if they're um, you know, not able to move their feet, if their feet are hanging in a, in a dependent position. Um, difficulties with speech, difficulties with chewing and swallowing, uh, difficulties clearing secretions. So that would be mucus and saliva. If your uh, throat and um, uh, facial muscles are getting weak, um, we don't normally even think about when we have mucus in our throat, we just, you know, clear it. Um, but it's harder if, if, if those muscles are weak. So that it just kind of sits there and pulls. A uh, person may have shortness of breath and or orthopnea which is trouble lying um, flat and breathing. Uh, they might have pseudobulbar affect, which is uncontrollable laughing or crying for periods of time. And the person may have depressed mood, anxiety, and or trouble sleeping. ALS does not usually affect the following bowel and bladder. Um, although many, many people get constipated with ALS and I think it's because of change in diet, change in mobility. It's kind of their usual activities. Bladder, some people complain of urinary urgency and frequency and we're not, we're not sure why about that. Um, it doesn't affect the internal organs because they are covered in involuntary muscle. So the heart, the kidneys, and that kind of thing. Doesn't affect the senses because it, it doesn't affect the sensory nerves. It doesn't affect sexual function because touch is, is preserved with ALS because that's a, that's a sensory nerve. So people still feel, feel pleasure and they feel pain. So if you have somebody who can't move their arm, they still feel everything in their arm. They, they, um, and you're, you know, rubbing it, they can, they can feel that. 